Have you ever asked yourself the question, what would happen if the moon was out of orbit? What would happen if the moon got so close to Earth it caused gravity waves? What if the moon was actually just a shell for a dwarf star? Well, lucky for you, somebody's not only asked those questions, but also brought to life what that might look like. That someone is none other than writer-director Roland Emmerich, best known for Independence Day 2012 and Independence Day 2. So you just know that his imagination is going to be the most insane and bizarre thing you could ever picture. It's on airplane mode. I of course am talking about the world ending movie that is Moonfall. The plot of Moonfall is about as simple as it sounds. Moon fall down. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this Actually, no. This thing goes from pure insanity to what the fuck am I watching in the last 15 minutes. I have watched a lot of bad movies, but this one took a turn in a way that I will always laugh at. Now, in order for you to fully appreciate that moment, we have to go through everything leading up to that moment. We start with Patrick Wilson, one of the most recognizable faces in Hollywood, because this man has been in so many big and major movies, it's kind of insane. The amount of notable ones I could put on screen could be its own video. So pause here if you want to see all these lovely examples that I made special just for you. But he is playing Brian Harper, a disgraced astronaut, washed up dad, and divorced loser. So basically every character trait that's given to single dads in action movies all rolled into one. His former astronaut friend Jocinda Fowler is played by Halle Berry, who apparently took this role because of the COVID pandemic in 2020. So that's nice. And finally, KC Houseman, the comic relief and space-obsessed side character played by John Bradley. This movie also has an insane amount of side characters, too many to list in any way that makes sense, so we'll just talk about them when it's necessary for the plot. So Brian and Jacinda are conducting a satellite repair mission when their shuttle's power goes out and an unknown swarm attacks them. This leaves Jocinda knocked out, their third nameless friend dead, and Brian being the only one to witness a puff of smoke on the moon. Then the movie jumps 10 years in the future, and Brian is now disgraced because NASA made him seem crazy as he told his side of the story for the satellite repair mission. Brian then ends up meeting KC, and the two join forces when they learn about the moon being out of orbit. At the same time, Jocinda is now in charge of NASA, because the guy who was in charge decided to peace out when he learned that the moon was gonna crash into Earth, which is honestly pretty valid. So Jacinda, Brian, and KC end up teaming up in order to solve the problem of the moon's orbit. And now this all has to be done before the big dum-dums in the military shoot nukes at it. That is seriously the driving force behind the time limit they have to get to the moon and stop the AI swarm. The US military wants to nuke the moon in hopes that it'll somehow knock it back into orbit. What? What the fuck? I think the only accurate depiction Moonfall got right was how stupid the military would be in a situation like this. So the big plan they come up with is to bait the AI monster with a lunar rover they've planted an EMP on. So when it starts to consume it, they can hopefully shut it down. Now this all takes place while one of the most boring and pointless side plots is cut in between. And this side plot just so happens to hit every single world ending trope. Main character's ex-wife has now remarried, so we have the stepdad who's rich and will inevitably die in order to make you realize that he really wasn't that bad. Check. The other main character is also divorced and her son needs to be reunited with his military father who can hopefully save him from the world ending event. Check. The son of one main character and the daughter of another main character start a vague romance. Although in this movie, she's a foreign exchange student, but whatever. Check. 
This whole side plot is just about the kids trying to get to the military bunker, but they got their vehicle stolen and now they just have to find a new way to get there. Which basically results in a bunch of fetch quests and an extra 30 minutes to this movie that easily could have been cut out. Instead though, they do have what could be considered the worst CGI car chase destruction scene I have ever witnessed in a movie. This would be almost unwatchable if it wasn't so stupid. Oh shit. Now, the one thing in this movie that makes me gag is the weird obsession with Elon Musk that KC has. Thankfully, our, our friends at SpaceX have a propellant depot currently oh in orbit. I love Elon. I mean, in reality, this movie is a big advertisement for SpaceX and Lexus. I guess I personally just wouldn't really suck up to the misogynistic pronoun fearing, guy who designed a terrible cyber truck that gets stuck in the sand, trash can of a human being that is Elon Musk, but that's just me. Magnum Speed Round. This is a new segment where I tell you things I liked or didn't like in this movie in rapid fire fashion. The acting between all the kid characters in their subplot is so bad. The son and exchange student talk to each other like they've never had a conversation in their entire life. There's these two side characters who are helping everyone the entire time, and they just die when their evacuation helicopter gets destroyed by a wave. They literally stayed behind to help launch the shuttle, and they get the most anticlimactic and undeserving death out of anyone. And also the use of green screen in this movie is so bad. Like for a movie with a $150 million budget, the effects across all of this movie are passable at best. That might explain why it's the 26th biggest box office bomb of all time. So then the trio fly into space and put their plan of saving the day into action. But when they try to use the rover as bait, it doesn't work. So then they have to fly into the moon's butthole. <coughs> then the AI swarm attacks them and they get beamed into a hangar and they all pass out. Okay, so now we get to the part where this already insane movie takes a turn into what the fuck am I watching? Brian wakes up in King's Cross Station with Harry and Dumbledore, and then he ends up having a chat with a hologram version of his son. It proceeds to tell him the following. Humans are an ancient civilization from billions and billions of years ago in another part of the universe. They became so advanced that they built an AI that did everything for them because they had no wars and no crime. Then the AI grew aware and rose up against the humans and started to kill anything that was a biological life form. So the humans built giant arcs powered by dwarf stars to go populate other planets in the universe. But our moon was the only ship that escaped. Then the moon creates our galaxy and our DNA is spread across the planet so humans can exist again. To recap what is going on in this movie, three people flew a space shuttle into the moon because a giant robotic swarm controlled by an AI wants to wipe out the humans by crashing our moon into Earth, but it turns out that humans are an ancient civilization from another part of the galaxy and the moon created Earth. Or Earth. None of this movie makes any sense at all. And I love it. I love it so much. It's so insane. It's so stupid. It's so crazy. And every part of it is just so much fun to watch. So then KC sacrifices himself to EMP the AI swarm bot and put the moon back in its rightful place. Even though I'm pretty sure if the moon got this close to Earth and then all of a sudden shot back into space, I think our planet would explode. Now I've saved the best part for last because the moon loving Elon Musk bootlicker wakes up in the same white void and is now part of the moon according to the moon. His mom shows up and tells him they have a lot to get started on and the movie cuts to black. 
And this is just so spot on for someone like Roland Emmerich. For those of you that don't know, he had a similar scene in Independence Day 2 where a bunch of human characters are gathered around and they talk about how they're going to take the fight to them. I, I guess that that's never going to happen. We are going to kick some serious alien ass. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> Look, I won't lie to you. This movie is terrible on pretty much every level, but I love every single moment of it. Moonfall is not a movie everyone should watch, but if you want to take a trip down Insanity Road, then this is the right movie for you. Which is why I put Moonfall into the so bad, it's good pile. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out my video on The Hurricane Heist, another insane movie. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below what movie you'd like to see me cover in the future.